Welcome. I think we've got folks gradually joining the virtual room here. As you join us, feel free to hop into the chat box. Go ahead and change the setting from all panelists to all panelists and attendees and introduce yourself with your name, your LEA or organization, and your favorite springtime activity. And we'll get started in just a moment. Want to make sure folks have an opportunity here to get into the virtual room. All right, I think more folks have joined. So if you've just joined us, feel free to hop into the chat box, change the setting to all panelists and attendees rather than all panelists, and introduce yourself. Thank you for getting us started there, Johnny. Welcome. All right, looks like we've got Beaumont, Prairie Lee in the house here, Longview. Great. Now, now I'm seeing some favorite springtime activities in here as well. Biking, watching baseball. Nice. Going to the river and relaxing. It's, it's such, a, such a great Texas hobby too. That's our springtime Texas activity. Great, and I think we've had even more folks join us. Feel free to hop in the chat if you've just joined us and introduce yourself your organization, your LEA, and your favorite springtime activity. I'm seeing some really fun ones here that are giving me some good, just weekend activity ideas. Love it. Well, keep the introductions coming. We are gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Mega Kansra. I'm the Director of System Support and Innovation here at the TEA, which means I support a number of programs uh, that help districts think strategically about their approach to um, innovation, but also COVID response and learning acceleration. Um, I'm also, I, I'm on a team with a few other team members who are lifting off this effort around tutoring, including Lizette Ridgway, the Director of District Systems and Strategies, who isn't here today, but you might actually hear Lizette uh, speaking to tutoring and coming to you with more on tutoring going forward. A few logistical notes before we jump in here. First, we love a lively chat box. It, in case you can't tell from how we've started off here, do feel free to enter your questions and reactions in the chat box throughout this conversation. And please know that this week we will follow up with slides and a recording. And we will share at the end a quick survey via chat so that we can get your feedback, but also your interest in some upcoming opportunities related to high dosage tutoring. We'll be covering a few key topics today. First, we'll start by grounding in COVID recovery and response and the why behind tutoring in this moment in time. Then we'll move to really providing an overview of high impact tutoring, and then provide you a sense of additional supports coming uh, along the lines uh, with TEA and we'll close out and take any additional questions. Um, I will note also we're very excited to be here today with uh, the Annenberg Institute at Brown University, Susanna Loeb and Kathy Benheim. Uh, and Kathy and Susanna are here to lend their expertise, share a lot of research backed components of high impact tutoring and, and really some high level sense of how you might establish high impact tutoring at your LEA. So we're thrilled to have Susanna and Kathy here um, and I'll be turning it over to them in just a few moments to really get into the meat of this topic. But first I wanna ground us a little bit in the why, um, why high dosage tutoring at this moment in time. So many of you might've seen this data that we are sharing on this slide. We at the TEA have crunched the numbers a little bit on beginning of year data. And what we've noticed is that we are facing even larger challenges, uh, you know, this time around at this moment in time than we've typically seen would say just a, a typical summer slide. Uh, so our beginning of year data showed that the COVID-19 slide might have added really, you know, about three, three and a half more months of learning loss on top of the typical summer slide. And now when we project that out to think about the entire school year uh, and even the portion of the school year from last school year since the pandemic really hit, um, we're looking at sometimes estimates of six to 12 months of unfinished learning for students, particularly depending on students' access uh, to strong virtual learning 
Um, and we've also seen greater impact for often low-income students and students of color. So we know that we're looking at a situation right now of significant unfinished learning. Additionally, what's clear to us is the actions we take now to tackle unfinished learning must be different from the actions we've taken in the past. This data here on this slide shows you kind of a historical sense of how we've performed as a state in the past in accelerating learning. So this graph in particular looks at third grade reading performance pre-COVID. So on the left-hand side, you see a red bar uh, that shows you the percentage of students and the number of students who were below grade level um, in 2017 in third grade reading. Um, what we see is that by 2019, we actually only successfully accelerated students, uh, only accelerated about 5% of students of that batch of students who were scoring below grade level. Um, I, I think when I look at this stat, it, it really hits home that historically, we know we've put a lot of effort into learning acceleration as schools, as districts, but historically, we have not necessarily met that goal of accelerating learning for most students within a couple of years. So really looking at this, it's clear that we must take more bold action that's more likely to lead to stronger student outcomes, which is really what brings us to high impact tutoring. So high impact tutoring is one of the, one of the most research backed and effective ways that LEAs can facilitate learning acceleration. We know that high impact tutoring has been proven to produce large learning gains in a short period of time. We know that this strategy works for a variety of K-12 students, and it's a strategy that can be scaled. Additionally, um, I think the timing is quite perfect here because we also know that implementing high impact tutoring is an explicitly allowable use of ESSER funds. So you're also better positioned perhaps than any other moment in the past as districts to potentially be able to fund and support an in-house strategy around high impact tutoring. Now, uh, I'll pause there. That's a very high level overview, but I'm excited to pass it over now to Susanna and Kathy at the Annenberg Institute who will dive a lot deeper into the research and the components of high impact tutoring. Passing it over to both of you. Thank you. Let me see if I can, oh, I need to, if you could take that down so I can share my screen, that'd be great. Okay, let's see if I can actually do this. Here we go. And start it. Okay, does that uh, work for you? Okay, it works. That's great. Okay, hello, thank you for having me here today. I'm excited to share what we're learning about tutoring. The National Student Support Accelerator envisions a time when all students in need have access to an effective tutor who supplements their classroom experiences and, cha and uh, champions their learning and success. We're working towards this vision, not by operating tutoring programs ourselves, but by developing communities of practice to discuss the standards of tutoring and how we can make it as, as good as it can be, reviewing and synthesizing research, and then using both those communities of practice and research to develop practical tools and technical assistance to help districts and nonprofits launch new tutoring programs or improve existing tutoring programs. So for today, we hope to share research-backed drivers of equity and quality in tutoring that can provide a strong foundation for your work in Texas and also beyond. As we all know, the pandemic has impacted students and has had a particularly severe impact on low income students and students of color. As you can see in this graph and as, and as Mega talked about in the introduction, um, all students have lost, uh, have lost learning or have, have um, not learned as much as normal during this time, but the, the learning, um, the lack of learning has been, let, been more severe for schools with students of color than in schools with white students. So just as one example, if you take math, which is um, one of the, which is a little worse than in reading, you can see that for schools with 50% white students, 
they're, they learned about 69% as much as they do normally, whereas schools with greater than 50% students of color learned only 59% of um, what they had learned in previous years. So this is slightly older data and not specific to Texas, but my guess is that it's similar across states and that you've seen drops for students on average, not all students, but for students on average and particularly severe drops for students of color and students living in poverty. So what can we do? Well, rarely in research do we have so much evidence pointing to the promise of uh, specific kinds of tutoring. Researchers have performed over 150 random control trials. These are systematic studies of program effects that do a great job of isolating the true effects of tutoring across grade levels and subject areas, with the effects in most cases ranging from half a year to more than a year of learning over one academic year of tutoring. So the students across these studies, and this it's so rare to have these, this many studies, learned at least half a year um, more when they, were, when they had access to this kind of tutoring. Tutoring turns out to be a really effective way to accelerate learning for those with substantial unfinished learning in particular, but for a wide range of students as well. Well, we knew from the research that tutoring is unusually effective approach for accelerating learning, but in recent, recent analyses that have, have looked not only at tutoring, but other um, interventions as well, has found that it's more effective than almost any other intervention that's been tested. Its effectiveness in many ways is not that surprising, given that tutoring can target the specific needs of each student and tutoring from a consistent tutor can help develop a close adult student relationship, which can improve students' engagement in school and their overall well being. In fact, tutoring is often the intervention of choice for those who can afford it. About $42 billion were spent on tutoring in the US last year alone, benefiting many students, but certainly increasing inequalities in access to opportunities because much of that money was spent by parents on their own children. Our efforts are focused on increasing equity by providing this highly effective intervention for students who are in need. In addition to the clear benefits for students, tutoring can also have benefits for tutors and for the teacher pipeline. Tutoring can be an on-ramp to the teaching profession, creating a hands-on experience to help tutors understand whether tutoring is a good fit for them as a career. In addition, if tutors are recruited from the local community or the local college, tutoring as a pipeline provides an opportunity for the teacher workforce to more closely reflect the students being served. And it may also be an opportunity to recruit in uh, new teachers with skills in science and math and other uh, areas that are often difficult to, to staff. However, as we know, people define tutoring in many ways and not all those ways are effective. In fact, during the No Child Left Behind era, Parents whose children were in schools failing to meet adequately yearly, ad, adequate yearly progress for two or more years were able to sign their children up for tutoring outside of school for free. This may sound like, some, like a good idea, but it really wasn't particularly effective. Only about 23% of eligible students participated, and for those students, the average impact was close to zero. However, tutoring demonstrated some positive outcomes even during the NCLB times, and those effects tended to be in places with minimum dosage requirements so that there was students received substantial tutoring and more structured tutoring sessions and stronger coordination with schools. So not all tutoring is effective, but evidence does point to several critical elements for effective tutoring that we're calling high impact tutoring. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the rest of the time is really to spend it going through what are those elements and what is high impact tutoring. But in order to do this, what we were hoping to do is to get your sense of uh, tutoring for your districts and what kinds of challenges you face. So we'd like to do a quick poll and ask what is the most challenging barrier to providing high impact tutoring for students in need? Is it interest of educators in providing tutoring? knowing what to do to make tutoring high impact, funding for tutoring or scheduling for tutoring. So 
Uh, Mega, can you get the poll up? Yeah, I am uh, having a, a little bit of a challenge putting the poll up this time, um, seeing if one of my, my teammates might be able to. But in the meantime, all right, we're, we're taking just, just a moment. The poll will come up. I'm happy just to go on and we can do it later too, if that would be better, because we will go into the how do, how do you implement it as well. My guess is we might be able to get it up fairly quickly. Let's see okay. here. And, and we, we can fail fast and move forward if we if we don't have it up in, in about 15 more seconds. <laughs> let's go ahead, let's go ahead and go back to it in just a minute. Great, that sounds great. Okay, whenever you're ready, let me know. It, it really can fit in any way, but it's really interesting for us. And I think it's interesting, hopefully it'll be interesting for you to see kind of what the issues are across places in the state. Um, okay, so as we were saying, there's an impressively large body of evidence that, it, that supports tutoring. From all these studies, we can look at effective models and see common elements of those models that make them high impact. So based on the research and many conversations with educators and other leaders in the field, we've synthesized these critical elements into a framework for high impact tutoring, which you see in the picture here. In particular, there are seven elements that are critical. The first three are foundational elements, equity, safety, and cohesion. And they support four model specific elements related to the tutor, to instruction, to learning integration, and to data use. So I'll go into these in a bit of detail. Okay, so the three, three elements are essential to set the foundation for any high impact tutoring program. First, the program must be grounded in equity. This means assuring students who need it most have access. And this is really important and we'll come back to this a couple of times. And it also means that tutors lead sessions with equity at the center of their instruction. Okay, so the first is equity. The second is that the program must ensure student safety. And this of course is just a given. This means designing the tutoring program in which students and their information are safe and protected. Tutoring programs can build in safety protocols in a number of innovative ways. During the pandemic, for example, many programs shifted to virtual tutoring, which allowed them to do things like scanning sessions for inappropriate language on top of the more typical safety focused processes, such as observations of sessions by supervisors, background checks, and then some important initial training for tutors. A final foundational element is cohesion. Good programs basically have effective leaders who make sure all their elements and internal systems work together cohesively towards program goals. You, can, you won't have an effective program if it's not well run. So equity, safety, and cohesion are fundamental to, pro, to strong programs. Now let's turn to the model specific um, elements. The first is the tutor. Effective programs place a high priority on developing a strong tutor-student relationship which requires having a consistent tutor who not only has command of the appropriate content knowledge, but just as importantly is skilled at engaging students and developing positive relationships. Effective programs also provide oversight and coaching for the tutors so that you know that they're doing this, so that you can help them do better. And, and so this coaching and oversight is a really important pro, uh, element of effective programs. This said, a wide range of people can become effective tutors. While teachers have proven to be particularly effective, paraprofessionals can be very effective tutors and may be more feasible to employ as tutors than teachers, both for cost and for logistical reasons. Tutoring programs staffed by volunteers and university students display positive, though smaller impact than those staffed by teachers and paraprofessionals. But many of those programs aren't really very well structured as well. And so it's hard to know if, if it is possible that you could get very effective programs using university students or volunteers as well. Many of your districts are in rural areas and may be concerned about finding enough tutors. For some grades and content areas, you'll likely be able to find local community members, retired teachers, recent college graduates, really many adults as long as they can create these strong relationships with students to serve as tutors. For older grades or more technical courses, such as upper level math, virtual tutors are really a strong option. 
While local community members are always preferred for a number of reasons, a recent study specifically on virtual tutoring did show that virtual tutoring can be very effective. So high impact tutoring programs have strong tutors who have received initial training and have ongoing coaching and evaluation, but they can come from a wide range of sources. The second model specific element is instruction. High impact tutoring requires special attention to the amount of instruction and to the instructional materials. Evidence shows that to be high impact, students need to see their tutors at least three times a week for at least a semester and better yet for a full year. Instructional minutes per session can vary by grade level and still be effective. 30 minutes is effective in early grades, but older students benefit from somewhat longer sessions of 45 minutes to an hour, a typical class size, a, a, a typical a class length. The quality of instruction is of course important as well. Certified and experienced teachers can often provide high quality instruction without additional supports, but most tutors need quality instructional material. In the best case scenario, the school is using high quality materials that the tutors can use and build off of. In the large majority of cases, the goal of, student, of tutoring is to keep students on track in their courses, helping them understand the material they need to be successful. That's why it's, it's, it's accelerating them through those courses. As a result, it's good to align to the curriculum. However, if the school's curricular materials are not particularly strong, or the school doesn't have time to fully engage with the tutors, a high impact tutoring program will supplement the classroom materials with other high quality materials that are aligned to state standards. And we've seen really good effects in these cases as well. Okay, so that's the second, we've got tutors, we've got instruction. The third model specific element of high impact tutoring is integration. How a program is integrated into a student's existing learning can also drive impact. Programs embedded in the school day or directly or before or after school are particularly effective. Primarily, this gets back to equity a bit. Primarily, this integration with schools is important because these programs have higher attendance and for equity, they're able to reach the students who need tutoring the most. Embedding uh, tutoring in the school day also gives tutors and teachers opportunities to share information, even informally, and students are more likely to see their tutors as part of their larger school experience. Family integration can also benefit tutoring programs. Engaging the student's family creates another opportunity for relationship building and learning about each student's particular needs and experiences and abilities. But when you're thinking about embedding in, in schools and learning integration, I think the first thing to remember is that's how you can make sure that you can reach the students you really need to reach. Okay, the fourth and last model specific element of high impact tutoring is data. High impact programs use data to understand students learning needs and then to track their progress. These data can come from the school or from the teacher or the program can do their own formative assessments to track project progress and design tutoring sessions to meet the needs of individual students. Regardless of the source of the data, what's important is, to is the use of data to tailor instruction to students. That's really uh, one of the best parts of tutoring is that it can really address students' needs and data is really important to inform um, the tutors so that they know what to do and, and what to focus on. High impact programs also use data to regularly track overall program progress and to identify trends or areas for improvement. So data comes in in a number of ways, but it's really important that, data, that tutors have uh, data on their students. Okay, just to summarize a bit, in setting up or choosing a program that you wanna be high quality, some of the elements are essential while others can vary with context. In terms of tutors, they need to love working with students and have the ability to engage them. They also need to be reliable and they need ongoing oversight and access to coaching so that they can improve. Their background is less important. Certified teachers can make excellent tutors, but so can paraprofessionals, college graduates and others, or college, even college students. Their background is, oh, in terms of instruction, um, you need enough of it at least three times a week for at least 30 minutes 
and you need high quality materials. Um, okay, sorry, I just lost my place. In terms of integration, in um, high impact programs vary in some aspect, but almost all have tutoring sessions embedded in the school day. This feature is really important. Unless you have a clear alternative for reaching all students in need, it really needs to be in the school day. On the other hand, the role of the teacher and the match between the materials and, the, and tutoring can vary depending on what is feasible. Having teachers involved is great, but can be difficult, especially during this time when so many teachers are exhausted. Finally, data on tutors, um, data, uh, finally, <laughs> On data, tutors need data to know their students' strengths and areas for focus, and programs need data to monitor quality and continuously improve. Where those data come from, though, can vary. Tutors can collect formative assessment data, for example, or they can read the, receive the data from the school or district. So overall, high impact tutoring has some clear absolutes that separate it from other forms of tutoring, but on many elements, there is also flexibility. Okay, so I thought maybe we'd pause here and try the, the um, poll again if we can. Great call, Susanna. Um, if you could pause screen sharing for a moment, I'm gonna launch uh, a poll here. I think so folks have had a moment to maybe start thinking about this question around barriers. Um, so I'm launching the polling here and you are likely viewing the question, so uh, what do you see as the most challenging barrier to providing high impact tutoring for students in need? And we've got interested educators in providing tutoring, knowing what to do to make tutoring high impact, funding and scheduling. Give folks a moment here to, to let the answers trickle in. Really interesting seeing these answers come in, giving folks a few more seconds here. All right. So you should now be able to view the poll results and uh, it's interesting to see here. It sounds like you've come to the right place because uh, one of the top answers here, about 43% of folks say that knowing what to do to make tutoring high impact seems to be the most challenging barrier followed by scheduling, so really that operational piece, and then the interest of educators in providing tutoring. Um, so I imagine it, it, it might have piqued your interest then uh, to, to hear Susanna talk about, uh, you know, potentially other tutor types to tap as well, and, and what really is required uh, in tutors who we work with. Um, so hopefully that's helpful and, and also just helpful to know you are not the only one uh, struggling with a particular barrier to uh, establishing high impact tutoring at your district. Uh, there are a lot of uh, in this conversation who are, who are thinking about this, the same questions. I'll stop sharing the results here. Okay, let me go back to this. See, ah, that was weird. Let me try one more time. And while Susanna is getting uh, the right piece up, um, I did notice one really good question in the chat um, from Christina, I believe, um, just about distinguishing the, the difference between kind of high impact tutoring and RTI, the difference between or connection to. And I'm wondering, uh, Kathy, Perhaps you could jump in and, and speak to that uh, as we give Susanna just a moment here. Yes, as I tried. Yes, and I'm sorry that I missed the question. The question is around RTI and how it integrates. Yeah, so just oh. intersections with or differences from RTI and high impact tutoring, which I think is a, a common question here. Right, so um, high impact tutoring is an intervention that can be used within the existing RTI framework. Um, and oftentimes folks will use um, high impact tutoring for um, not for uh, tier one instruction, but maybe for tier two um, as well can be used um, as effectively for tier three. Um, so it can be used as one of the interventions that is um, 
evidence-backed, so it qualifies for that type of, um, of intervention. Oh, and it looks like, are we up? Oh, okay. yeah. Susanna, yes, I went I ahead and have it up now. Sorry, I was just waiting for you to finish so that I wasn't distracting. Okay, thank oh. you. Let's Susanna, see. I got it up, so happy to, to page through uh, for y'all. Oh, oh, I could get it up if you would. No, it's... You want, that was, I wouldn't have had it. I don't, okay, there we go, sorry. Uh, share screen. Okay, we will start this again. Okay. Okay, so implementing tutoring can take some work. As you, as you noticed, as we were asking in the poll, there are a number of barriers to implementing high impact tutoring. The biggest barriers in the past have been scheduling tutoring into already existing school schedules, funding, and having enough information to make it easy for districts to adopt tutoring with quality. Okay, so just the things we were talking about in the poll. However, we're finding through our pilot sites, we're working with about 10 pilot sites around the country, that we have an opportunity right now. With schools already disruptive and disrupted and focused on finding solution, school leaders are searching for and considering new options, including adjusting their schedules. Funding is also easier, at least for the next couple of years. A portion of the COVID relief funding must be spent to address learning loss with evidence-based interventions. Tutoring is clearly an evidence-based practice, so the new funding that's available can be used for it, and it's really a substantial amount. So finally, the recent research has allowed us to better understand what drives impact in tutoring, so we have a much clearer understanding of best practices and are working towards tools and capacity to scale tutoring with quality. We have a better sense of the infrastructure and policy needs to assure quality. This may be the best opportunity that we'll have to get this proven intervention built into schools for the long run to provide all students in need with high impact tutoring to supplement, and that's important. It doesn't replace, it supplements their classroom work and is part of core instruction. So currently, a number of districts in Texas are working to implement high impact tutoring. Here are two quite different examples. So the Dallas Independent School District has been offering high impact tutoring in some schools in early literacy. Its goal moving forward is to provide tutoring for 15,000 students in first through eighth grade. And it is currently soliciting proposals through an RFP for tutoring providers and will select multiple tutoring providers to provide this tutoring. So they're going for outside providers. Um, Far San Juan Alamo in a different part of the state um, on the other hand is focusing not only on early literacy, but on third through eighth grade for migrant students. They're doing daily tutoring in math and English language arts for approximately 100 students. So these two districts are taking quite different approaches and using tutoring in different ways, but very much to, to meet their needs and their priorities. As one more example, we're working with Spring ISD, again, trying to get a, a range of districts here to, to discuss, to pilot a tutoring program for English learners and third through eighth grade students with special needs. The students receive tutoring daily for 60 minutes. They are assigned to groups of three to five students according to their strengths on particular learning objectives. So this program uses data a lot. Each lesson is adapted to the local context and includes career readiness components and is aligned with state standards. The district partner um, for this, because they, they work with a partner instead of developing one internally, is a program called Intervene K-12, which is a Texas-based tutoring organization um, that provides tutoring and sessions are held during the school day. Intervene provides regular updates on student progress to the school and the district, and it uses a pretest to assess students' skills so that they collect the data that they use to target students' needs. The CEO of Intervene is a person of color and the program has a deep equity mission and 70% of Intervene's tutors are people of color. 
These are just examples. Texas has high impact tutoring going on already, and we've seen strong interest in expanding to reach more students who can benefit from this type of individualized attention and support. So in order to support states across the country with implementation, we've recently launched the National Student Support Accelerator to make it easier for districts and schools and nonprofits to adopt high impact tutoring. Our vision, as you can see in the slide, is that every student in need has access to an effective tutor who champions and ensures their learning and success. The Accelerator plans to reach this vision by supporting district schools and nonprofits uh, and tutoring organizations to adopt and grow high impact tutoring with quality. Our three, and I'm just giving you this so that you know that we're there to help if we can and that these tools are available. Our three primary strands of work are first to facilitate implementation. So we're building research-backed tools. We have high-level technical assistance, the tools you can find on our website. Um, and they're aimed both to help districts walk through developing programs and for programs to assess how they're providing tutoring and um, to provide it with higher quality. Our second goal is to catalyze the field so to create these communities of practice to do new research but also to summarize the research that's out there particularly by working with pilot sites so we understand implementation challenges and this helps us to create the tools and to do the technical assistance effectively and then we hope to engage and activate stakeholders with with webinars like these that um, just get the idea of tutoring out out there okay so these are just um two examples, but our website, whoops, this bent down. Um, on our website, you can see things like a toolkit for tutoring programs, and you can just click through there and it'll show you everything from here is a, a sample job description for tutoring to these are the elements that you need to make sure is there. And then we also have a tutoring database, which will give you uh, information on programs that are out there. So if you want tutors for early literacy you can go in and who work in Texas you can go in and find them that way. Okay so thanks so much for the opportunity to share what we've um, been learning from the research about high impact tutoring. I really believe this is a critical moment to use this knowledge to support students in equitable, effective, and cost-effective way through high impact tutoring. So please check out our website and feel free to reach out to us. And we're also happy to open it up and answer any questions. All right, um, I will share just a little bit about TEA supports um, to give folks a, a little bit of time to, to let that sink in. And then I'm sure you have questions. Um, I wanna thank Susanna and Kathy for being here. I think um, it's really helpful to be rooted in what the research says um, really helps us establish strong tutoring practices. Um, so appreciate both of you being here because a lot of us are right here at the start of our learning journey to, to understand how to make this happen in our districts. I'm gonna share just a bit more about TEA supports coming along. So you've joined us for webinar one. We are working on two additional webinars that dive deeper into district level implementation. So later in May, uh, our dates are to be announced for these webinars. We'll dive more deeply into program design as well as program implementation. So on the program design side, we'll really be looking to support you in thinking about how you assemble your team in-house that might be working more closely on tutoring, selecting a program focus, creating a structure, selecting tutoring providers with an eye toward quality and many of the characteristics of high impact tutoring programs that Susanna and Kathy spoke about, as well as identifying high quality instructional materials, which we sometimes uh, shorten to HQIM here at the agency. Uh, and then the next session will be more about program implementation. So once you've got some of those design pieces in place, how might you think about the implementation overall? So stay tuned, we will follow up in an email to anyone who registered for this webinar or attended uh, with the dates and registration links for these follow-up webinars as well. In addition, we are announcing a deeper support, uh, which is called the High Impact Tutoring Implementation Workshop Series. So this is 
a three to four week workshop series that is intended to support LEA leaders with training and coaching to establish high impact tutoring programs. So the idea is that we know you're working hard at making a series of strong decisions to stand up a strong tutoring program from selecting a great tutoring provider to thinking about your curriculum strategy, scheduling operations, access for students, strategic selection of grades and content areas. So we wanna be there to support you if you'd like support. And uh, this uh, workshop series will um, put you in a place with other LEAs and um, provide you some one-on-one -on -one support with a technical assistance provider to help make those key decisions and come out kind of the other end of that workshop ready to launch your high impact tutoring workshop, your high impact tutoring program in-house. One other uh, piece here is that we are asking for your feedback. Uh, so we are going to drop uh, a survey link into the chat box here. Um, and I think the key thing here is we at the agency are working hard to understand what additional needs you have around tutoring, uh, any support needs you have on uh, or barriers that you're encountering that we can support you with. So this survey is intended to both get your, um, you know, your input on your needs so that we can shape future TEA supports to be responsive to those needs, um, but also it's a good place to indicate your interest uh, in this workshop series uh, that we just gave a brief overview of. Um, so do feel free to kind of click into that link. It's that Qualtrics link that we just dropped into the chat um, and go ahead and fill that out We'll be looking very closely at your feedback and your interest to shape future TEA supports and, and also to, uh, you know, uh, take in any of your interest in the workshop series and other supports. Um, and just a quick note from the chat as well. I think we encountered a, a small issue uh, the other day when we fielded this survey that your LEA might not be in the list in the drop down. If that's the case, don't worry. There's a space to write in your LEA name just below. All right, and with that, um, I do want to provide some space for additional questions. Um, do know that we at the TEA are here for many of your questions as well. Uh, this email address that we're projecting right here, texastutoring at tea.texas.gov uh, is an easy way to reach us. We are here to answer questions you've got if you have follow-up from this webinar, questions about supports coming online, questions about that workshop series, um, we're here and happy to help. Uh, but since we've got Susanna and Kathy here, I definitely want you all to have the opportunity ask, to ask them some additional questions as well. So feel free to hop into the chat and share any questions you've got for Susanna and Kathy. I'm, I'm noting one here actually um, from Donna. Are the interventions for early literacy described anywhere on the National Student Support Accelerator? Uh, Susanna, Kathy, any response there? Yeah, so here, I'll put a link to the accelerator in the chat so you can see that. Now, I'm not, um, are we thinking about the early literacy interventions that are tutoring? We do a lot there. So there are a description of early literacy programs. We're actually right now in the process of building early literacy specific tools, which should be up there in the next couple of months. But if you don't see what you're looking for in early literacy there, just reach out to us because we do have lots of information on early literacy. And certainly the programs are in the database. And I'm, I'm seeing a question here as well. Does high impact tutoring align with Reading Academy? So certainly if your district is going through the Reading Academies program right now, you've certainly, you're building up a lot of the foundational practices that'll be really helpful in high impact tutoring as well. Um, you know, I think that key piece around, how do you make sure uh, you're really aligning with the work that's happening in tier one instruction as well? Um, you know, this is, Reading Academies is a, is a great source of strategies as well for both your high impact tutoring efforts and your tier one efforts and a, a good way to keep the two aligned. Uh, and I'm seeing some good requests here for uh, email addresses and copies of the webinar. Uh, Susanna's just dropped her email address in there. Um, really appreciate that. And um, we will definitely be sending a copy of these slides as well as uh, the recording after this session. I 
I, I see a, a good question here that I imagine applies to a lot of districts. Um, so in training tutors, um, what, what is the thinking in terms of, let's see, those that would work with English learners um, and particularly thinking about English learner strategies. Um, so curious here, I think there, there's quite a bit wrapped up in this question, but uh, it seems like the, the bigger question here is how do we support um, English learners in high impact tutoring, um, but then also thinking about, you know, whether their curiosity around whether we'll have particular resources around English learner support. Um, so Kathy and, and Suzanne, I wonder if you can speak more broadly to that, that first question about supporting English learners. Yes, actually, English learner, supporting English learners is one of the most popular kind of desires for districts. So when they think about what is the, the need that they most want to address, many of them come, come back to English learners. And, and so I think there's, it is, it's a great approach for English learners as well as for, for other students. And um, you just wanna make sure that the, the um, tutors have the information that they need. So a fair amount of uh, the, ins the instructional, um, the pedagogical approaches for English learners uh, that teachers in training learn Tutors don't necessarily need to learn because that's how to reach them in a classroom with writing on the board and with the, the um, other kinds of, of kind of pedagogies for teaching English learners in a big group. One of the wonderful things about tutoring is that you really get to reach each individual student and meet their needs directly. So that works with English learners just for like it does for students with all sorts of different needs. Many, um, because also tutoring can, can pull in people from the community as tutors, local college students, college graduates, you're really able to recruit people with shared experience of English learners and who have, um, and who have skills in the language that the students speak at home. So in some ways, it's, a, it's kind of an easier thing to do. It's still, of course, important that the materials are good for the English learners. And so the program uh, needs to make sure that, that that is the case as well. But it's uh, reaching English learners as a common uh, goal of high impact tutoring programs. And um, it's actually really well positioned to do this well. And I'm making a note of the question here around resources uh, that we can provide centrally. Um, something that we will be releasing within about a week or two is a high impact tutoring toolkit as well um, that really pulls together a number of different resources. Uh, many also from the Accelerator team here today um, with credit where credit is due. Um, and we'll, we'll be sure to kind of keep an eye on um, English learner resources specifically as well, and, and see what we can do to actually integrate more specific guidance on this front into that toolkit. There was a question in the question and answers about IEPs and students with uh, special needs. Um, and uh, I mean, this tutoring's actually been used in special education <laughs> for quite a while. And so if you think about this as something that has been going on, you, you can think of moving it down to tier two and, and hopefully even into something that we expect as part of kind of the basic core instruction for students. So yes, I think it, it clearly meets uh, uh, the goals of many IEPs. We'll give folks another moment here in case there are any other questions coming up. Great, I'm seeing a question here, alignment to TRS or THL. Um, so, you know, I think, and, and just for folks, this is the, uh, either our resource system or Texas Home Learning. Um, Alexa, you know, I think this, the, the key question here uh, is, you know, in our minds, really less about TRS or THL and more about uh, ensuring that we're really using high quality instructional material uh, as part of tutoring. So there, there's certainly flexibility in um, how districts make decisions here. Um, but, you know, the, the key thing here is, are we supporting students and engaging with rigorous on grade level content? Are we using high quality material that we know is TEKS aligned? Um, and are tutors well-trained on that curriculum, right? Um, so 
tutor training uh, um, happening in a way that is content aligned um, so that tutors you know, have an awareness and, and understanding of, say, if, if they're math tutors, the particular math curriculum that you want to be using in tutoring, for example. Um, so I think that more than anything else is, is really the key factor here. And Susanna, Kathy, please, and if, uh, if you've got other thoughts there. No, I think that's just right. Um, All right, giving it one more moment here. Uh, we may end up giving you all back about 10 minutes here on this Tuesday morning. And again, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I know um, Susanna and Kathy have also put in uh, the website for the accelerator and Susanna's email address as well. And we're around here at the TEA at Texas tutoring at tea.texas.gov. With that, seeing no additional questions, I will close us out and just thank you all for being here today, for starting to proactively think about how to implement high impact tutoring at your districts. Um, you know, is it, you're probably walking away, hopefully walking away today with just a little bit more information, a little bit more of a sense of, you know, where to look for guidance. Um, and we're excited to follow up and keep supporting you in this journey. Thank you so much.